The situation seemed hopeless, insurmountable, unchanging, overwhelming, final. They wondered how to go on in a world with so much pain. And then suddenly, everything changed. Welcome to the Well St. Timothy's online Sunday service on this, the third Sunday of Easter. As we continue to celebrate these 50 days of Easter, a reminder that Easter is not just Easter Sunday, but it is 50 days, and it is not just 50 days, it is every day, 365 days a year that we are trying to remember that the risen Christ is in our midst and will be with us now and until the end of time. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the Revelation to John. I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O God, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O God, from the dead. 
you restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to God, you servants of God, and give thanks for the remembrance of God's holiness. For divine wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, divine favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, O oh God, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O oh God. I pleaded with you, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O oh God, and have mercy upon me. O oh God, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O oh God, my God, I will give you thanks forever. The Gospel for today is from the 21st chapter of John. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I'm recording this sermon in the parking lot of the church um, with the dumpster um, in the background. And here's why I'm doing this. You know, when you read uh, John's Gospel and you get to the end of chapter 20, right before where we began the reading today, it says that Jesus did many other things that were not included in this book. And the Gospel comes to what seems to be an end. That the things in this Gospel are written that you may believe. and. If there wasn't chapter 21, you would just assume that the book has come to an end. But then you get the story today. One of the questions it begs is, why do we have this story today? Many scholars think that chapter 21 was added on after the fact that there was an original version of the Gospel of John and then later on they added this or of course, like with so many questions surrounding the New Testament, we'll never know the, the answer. But here I think is a profound message of this story. In chapter 20, the risen Christ appears to Mary Magdalene, the risen Christ appears to the disciples in the upper room, to doubting Thomas. It is this profound encounter with this life-changing reality that has changed the course of human history forever. But when you start to read chapter 21, it's as though nothing has happened to change anything. What do we find? We find that the disciples are back in Galilee, back to fishing, and life is going on as it went on, not only before Good Friday and Easter, but before Jesus even called them to follow him. And I just wonder if what the editor of the Gospel of John did, if indeed there was an editor who added this chapter on at the end, if what this editor knew was that the great challenge of discipleship is living one's life continually aware that something has happened to change everything. My wife went to the uh, grocery store a couple days after Easter and she came home and the first thing she said was, boy, you would never know Easter had ever happened. All the Easter decorations gone. All the Easter candy gone. 
She said they moved on to s'mores. I guess that's the, the big focus now. Well, of course, stores in the dominant culture are driven by the market. And so you have this season of, of Easter. Of course, the Easter candies put out long before Easter ever happens. But in a store, there would be no sense that this Easter season is 50 days long. You just simply move on to the next thing. But what the church knows is that we need to ponder this mystery for 50 days. We need to ponder it for seven Sundays. If indeed we're going to realize that the risen Christ is in our midst in an ongoing way, not just on one day. I think what this gospel invites us to do is to remember that after Easter Sunday, we indeed go back to our, our lives, don't we? I mean, the disciples went back to doing things that they knew how to do. They were, they were now followers of Jesus and empowered by the Holy Spirit, but they went back to fishing, they went back to taking care of family and friends as they announced this good news. But at least as the story has it today, it's as though nothing's happened. And of course, in our case, we go back to our lives. You know, after Easter Sunday, we go back to taking care of children. We go back to taking care of elderly parents. We go back to dealing with disease. We go back to chemotherapy. We go back to our jobs. We go back to the challenges um, in our neighborhoods, in our country, in our world. We go back to the realization that the war in Ukraine is still going and no end in sight. That life indeed goes on. But the challenge will be, do we realize that we go back to those lives aware that there is a power in our midst that can bring newness, that can bring transformation, and that in light of that, everything is seen differently. You know, the psalm for today says, weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. That is the awareness that there's a power in our midst that although there may be weeping, although there may be grieving, although there may be loss, there's a day when joy will come in the morning. As the psalmist says, there will be wailing, but there will also be dancing because there's a power that brings new life. And as Peter discovers today in this story, there is the power of God's unbelievable forgiveness. You know, when the disciples swim to the, the shore to have breakfast with Jesus, he's there sitting in front of a charcoal fire. And if you know your Gospel of John, you know the only other mention of charcoal fire is the fire where Peter was warming his hands when he denied Jesus three times. And so what the author has done is given us this new charcoal fire to remind us of Peter's denial. But then what does Jesus do? Jesus asks Peter three times, do you love me? And three times he says, yes, Lord, I love you. What the story is doing is counteracting the denials with three invitations to Peter to let Jesus know how much he loves him. Followed by Jesus' invitation, okay, if you love me, then feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. It is a story about forgiveness. It is a reminder to Peter that because God raised Jesus from the dead and because Jesus came back to his original followers, 
and because he breathed in them the spirit that their denials, their betrayals, all those years of following him where they really didn't get it, none of that will get in the way of what he wants to do with them now. As we live out these 50 days, let us realize that we go back into our lives with this risen presence in our midst. May this Sunday and each Sunday be a reminder that Easter is not just one day, and in fact, it's not just 50 days, but it is for the rest of our lives. That what God did when God raised Jesus from the dead was that God pronounced once and for all that death cannot destroy what is good and beautiful and lovely and was embodied in Jesus. That nothing can ever separate us from that love. And that that love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That love is here to give us new chapters when all hope seems lost. That that love is with us as we go about our day-to-day -day work, taking stuff out to the dumpster, you know, cleaning the bathrooms, tending the kids, caring for elderly parents, doing the work that God has called us to do. That the risen Christ is with us, a source of constant renewal and life Enjoy. Happy Easter. Dear God, we thank you today for all the signs of new life during this Easter season. Baby birds, warm sunshine, colorful flowers, the return of parties and concerts outside, the simple yet profound freedom this spring to go in public with less fear of devastating illness. We are reminded in today's readings that you do perform miracles in the midst of everyday life, even for people who might not expect it. Such as Saul, who was transformed from a warrior against the early Christians into Paul, 
a warrior for Jesus Christ. And simple fishermen catching more fish and people than they could ever expect. We can feel the lifting of our spirits in recalling these acts, and we are grateful to you. But our world needs your grace and mercy so desperately, O oh God. And we are emboldened to name a few of these needs before you now. People awaiting poten potentially life-altering medical tests and diagnoses, and those suffering from the pandemic. Ukrainians and Russians praying for the safety of their beloved soldiers. Defenseless people who are hungry or who experience their homes as dangerous places. All those who have lost their spirit to live because of illness, loneliness, grief, and deprivation. Our Mother Earth's climate crisis and the dangers facing innumerable creatures and plant species who depend on human actions for their survival. People encountering physical and emotional violence because of discrimination against them. Please reassure all your children of your abiding love and care, dear God. In the spirit of today's gospel, help us feed your sheep here on earth because of our love for you and for our hope of the daily and final resurrections to come. During this season, as we look forward to the transformation commemorated at Pentecost, we ask you to bless the church worldwide. May we all serve as your hands and feet in this world. And may we learn to clasp the hands of our sisters and brothers from different faith traditions to make your kingdom a reality for everyone. Send your healing spirit to those on our prayer list especially Dory Dreisbach, John Crandall, Tommy Lodcap, Bill Hart, Dan Pasek, Mason Miller, David Dreisbach Sr., Mike Forrest, Grace Owens, Jane Habig, Angela Berner, Tom Keller, Alida Schatz, Selah Maisie Hart, Norma Blatt, Rob Alfieri, Nancy Kess, Jaroslav, Lisa Bernheisel, Wendy Jones, Brandon Frerking, Andrew Fenner, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. We pray for the dearly departed, especially those we now name before you. Heavenly Father and Mother, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we conclude our worship today, just a reminder that during the 50 days of Easter, we're taking a collection for interparish ministry a collection of breakfast items like cereal boxes and pancake mix, and canned meats like tuna, chicken, meat ravioli, whatever, whatever you can, can bring. When you bring them to the church, just simply bring them in to the church and place them around the altar. And then on the 50th day of Easter, Pentecost, we will take them to inner parish ministry.
So these doors behind me are always a reminder at our online service that we are going from this worship out into our world. As those disciples were sent out to live post-resurrection Sunday and to try to live in light of that ongoing presence, that as they lived their lives day to day, they would know that the risen Christ was with them in every detail of their life. And because that presence was with them, there is always hope. Let us sum up our worship today in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of the one holy and living God be with you this Easter season and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.